Hi everybody, I am back again with another video. My hair looks crazy. <laughs> right? Um, so today I wanted to come on to talk a little bit about, you know, some of the things that we can use this time to focus on. You know, um, as the country opens back in phases, you know, some of us are still home. Um, some of us may not even have jobs to return to once things go back to some sort of normalcy due to the COVID-19 situation. But I always say, you know, use the time that you have wisely so that when you do get back out there, I remember I made a post um, last week saying that it would be very unfortunate that when we return to some level of normalcy, we get back out after this lockdown in the same condition that we came on to the come came into the lockdown in you know i think um we have been allowed um the time to really work on us you know for those of us that want to do that um so i go to a prophetic apostolic church revival fire apostolic center in marbella and uh, the ministry is a part of a wider ministry called Christian International. That is where um, my apostles, um, you know, were, who they were ordained under. And um, for those of us that don't know, Christian International is a organization based out in Florida, in the United States, and it is headed by the father of the prophetic um, apostle Bill Hammond. Um, and he wrote a book called, let me see if I have it here to show you, Prophets, Pitfalls, and Principles, right? It's a really good book, um, especially for those of us that are called to the office of the prophetic or have a prophetic call or, you know, operate in some level of the prophetic. This is a great book to read. Um, and there's something that he calls it 10 M's. To, maintain, to maturing, maintaining manhood and ministry eternal. Yeah. So it's the 10 M's, Bishop Bill Hammond's 10 M's to maturing and maintaining manhood and ministry, determining prophetic ministers true or false status, right? Um, my apostle was so kind enough to um, send me his notes. So I really appreciate you, Dad. Um, but I wanted to give you these 10 M's not on a um, ministerial, um, uh, not on a ministerial strength, but really for us to use these 10 M's to examine ourselves. Because these 10 M's really help us prepare ourselves for ministry. These things should be intact before we do step onto our platforms in ministry. These 10 things should be seen about um and we should have experienced some sort of growth and development in these 10 areas so i just want to get into it with you really quickly right so the first m is manhood um or womanhood you know god we are spirit beings to god so it has an agenda right so so the female way because i say manhood so manhood womanhood right um so if you look at Genesis 1, 26 to 27, God makes the man before manifesting my, the mighty ministry. God created us as individuals before um, we have titles, positions, jobs, all these things. God created, so just like he created Adam, he created Adam first. He didn't create, um, you know, the mighty ministry first and then poof, Adam disappeared in the middle of it, right? He created Adam and then he prepared Adam for that ministry, right? So, so God makes the man before manifesting the mighty ministry. Um, who is the man? Who are you apart from your position? Who are you apart from your ministry? Who are you apart from your um, responsibilities, your talents and all these different things that people may know you for? Who are you outside of these things? Right now, we are faced with a situation where many of us don't have our jobs, we don't have our titles and all these different things that we so heavily leaned on to give us some sort of importance and relevance in society. So who are you? 
without those things. Um, personality evaluating the person, not performance. So who, again, who are you outside of your 10 CXC subjects, your CAPES or your all your degrees, like the thermometer and all these things, who are you? And you know, we, if we look at Jesus, Jesus, um, was developing for 30 years for just for three and a half years of ministry. And many of us don't like to go through that processing because we want the we want to have the platform now. But Jesus prepared himself for 30 years before he stepped on his platform to do ministry for just three and a half years before he died. And in that three and a half year of years of ministry, we that was probably the greatest time on the earth back then because the amount of miracles, signs, and wonders that Jesus exhibited. But he spent 30 years building the man before stepping onto his, his ministry platform. Second M, ministry. Um, and when I, when I, I want to talk about ministry in this aspect from what are you called to do? You know, it is important to know what you are called to do. When you don't know what you're called to do, it's almost like you're just running on like a headless chicken. So what is the ministry that God has called you to? And not, ministry doesn't mean you have to go on a, a platform in a church with 10,000 of people, go in a stadium and talk to 10,000 of people. It's sometimes the littlest thing. What I'm doing here is ministry. When I um, teach children's church, that is ministry. When I, you know, talk encourage a wife that may be going through a hard time in her marriage that is ministry when i take care of my home and my husband and my children that is ministry so what is the thing that god has called you to do on the earth so knowing what that ministry is because sometimes um again these 10 m's are, are the 10 things that should be intact before we step on any platform to do anything because these 10 things will come under fire once we step onto platforms and things like that they will come under scrutiny just look at you look at social media a pastor can't say anything a minister can't say anything with it without it coming under heavy scrutiny by people who probably don't believe don't trust who've been hurt by church or who just don't trust trust church people are the whole right so we have those things to take into consideration what is your ministry what has god called you to do and sometimes um we could look at one aspect of ministry and think that it's more desirable than another part of ministry and that's the wrong mindset to have anything that god has called you to do if it's to clean if it's to to to, to hang curtains i mean do it with with all the passion and vigor and do it to the best of your ability because that is the thing that you will be most effective at because it is in accordance and in obedience to what God has called you to do. Third thing, the message. What is your message? What is your voice? You know, and your, and your message is always tied to your ministry. What is your voice? Speak the truth in love, present truth, and giving life. You, it, your, your, your speech must be in truth and in love. We cannot say things out here to damage people, to hurt people, to tear people down, to make people feel bad, to judge people. When anything that comes out of a mouth, even though it may be truth, and truth does hurt to the person that is receiving it, it must also be done in love, and the motive behind it should never be to hurt that person. And it must give life. It must, so when somebody talks to you, they should walk away from that conversation feeling encouraged. You know, even if you corrected them, they must be able to feel encouraged and feel that love so that they know, hey, you know, my brother or my sister really care about me. Um, your message must be balanced. You must have a balance between the spiritual, your doctrine and your spirit and the spiritual must be sound. Everything must be a balance. It can't be so um heavenly minded that you know earthly good. Everything must exist in a balance. Um fourthly, maturity. Maturity speaks of the right attitude mature in your human relations now some of us really struggle with relationships we really really struggle to maintain friendships and relationships with people um i for one 
as friendly as I am, I have wrong, I have rubbed some people the wrong way. And I had to, you know, check myself, check my maturity and really try to mend fences and things. And I know I would have done and said some things. And even in some of the things that I didn't do and say, it would have hurt some people. And just recently I had to write some emails. I had to make some phone calls. I had to text some people just to apologize, make some things right and, and you know, try to move on. I can't say that I'm a child of God knowing that I have wronged somebody, knowing that I've done something wrong, done something to betray somebody's trust or done something to hurt somebody and I just move in about life as normal. It doesn't work like that. The, because I have a relationship with God, conviction does set in and I am unable to operate in that space anymore and I just have to make things right. No matter how hard it might be, um, it's definitely humbling. And, it's, and that's eating a big piece of humble pie. And sometimes that's what we need. We need, we can be prideful, you know, in this time and in this season. Yeah, maturity in the fruits of the spirit. Fruits of the spirit comes from Galatians 5.22. Look at it, read it. Those are the fruits of the spirit. Those are the seeds that God has implanted in us. And over time, once we have a good relationship with God and with his word, those fruits will develop and mature in us which will in turn show forth in our character you know christ-like character being dependable and steadfast um there's a big one look at corinthians first corinthians 13 it said um the point is to not be childish and you know to be biblically knowledgeable and mature and not a novice in the things of god so your maturity not only in the earthly things but you must also be mature in spiritual the fifth thing that I think, yeah, and the fifth thing is a big thing. It's probably, I thought it would have been the first thing, but then when I look at the order of things, it kind of makes sense. The fifth thing is marriage. Your spirituality must be in order, meaning your personal family versus your, your, your God, your church family. Your church family should never take priority over the family that you have at home, your personal family. Um, your wife or your husband is your first church that you minister to and first church that you attend to so you can't leave your husband and wife and children undone running after the thing running after church things and church family and that's a big critical mistake that a lot of us in church tend to make not saying that church family isn't important and sometimes your church family um treats with you better and you have a better relationship with them because you're like-minded and you're like-spirited than you do with your personal family but all all priority should be given to your marriage your your personal family your family should never be able to say you're one way at home and then you're another way when you're in church um that is one of the things that i had to work on because i was so um passionate and zealous to serve the lord early on in my marriage i and i just thought well a my husband should just tramp on for now mind you my husband grew up in church and thing and all he knew was church and stuff like that but he made us he made a, a, a switch when he had a wife he wanted to spend time with me he wanted you know to do things with me and all i wanted to do was be in church and stuff like that and that did put a strain on our relationship and so please learn from my mistakes um it's okay if you miss church one sunday because you want to go to the beach with your family um yes we know you know going to church is important and spending that corporate time in worship with your church family is also important it's also in the word of god but let it not come at the expense of you maintaining a proper relationship with your family and you know for those of us that may be married to unsafe uh, you have an unsafe husband or a backslidden husband or an unsafe wife or a backslidden wife let me leave this piece of advice with you um i was reading this book called one one minute yeah i was reading this book called experience in the father's embrace by jack frost that book is so powerful and i will never forget chapter eight chapter eight was named being right versus having right relationship now this is specifically for couples and stuff like that right you know, sometimes you are right. You know, the point is, oh, you had a disagreement, or you all had something, and you are the right person in it. And sometimes we could get so caught up 
in being right in the argument or whatever that we forget that having right relationship is is much more important than just being right in that moment um so for those of you that may be um you know you may have that that little tussle with your unsafe husband or your unsafe wife when it comes to going to church um keep that in mind being right versus having a right relationship which side of the coin you want to be on do you want to be on the side of you know i am right because this is a word of god hallelujah and i'm going to go to church or do you want to have a right relationship with your family which is far more important than just being right in that moment another important point you know when it comes to your, your marriage relationship um, your priorities must be straight. So it's God's God first, your wife and your family, then ministry. Let it always be in that order. Um, or, you know, so I remember my apostle Marsha always said, why can't it be Jesus at the center and then everything revol revolves around him? So that is also a good thing. Everything must revolve around him. So listen to him um, more than anything else. And your marriage um, must exemplify relationship with Christ and his church. Because you know the, the word of God says that husbands love your wife as Christ loved the church. So the sixth thing that we want to talk about in terms of areas of your life that you should give some attention to, you know, during this quarantine is methods. Like, you know, your your ethics, your integrity, you know, are you honest? Are you upright? How do you do things? You know, not manipulating or deceptive. You know your, your methods and how you do things in your everyday life is important you know this is another area that I had to really you know put in check you know my integrity you know um, you know being an honest person you know um, these are things that I had to check and I still have to check from time to time because again I'm human and I will I will uh, but you know being aware of these things are very very important you know um, do you get good end results and not justify, you know, unscriptural or, you know, ungodly ways to do things? You know, you have people that they do bad things or they do unethical things, um, disintegrous things, and then they try to find a justification some way or the other on why it was okay for them to do things like that. So those are things you need to put in check, you know. Um, especially as children of God, we need to always operate um, above board, you know, um, not, you know, pretending or anything like that, but making a conscious effort to fix these things and put these things into perspective. Um, the seventh thing is manners, you know, being unselfish, being polite, um, being kind, you know, being a gentleman or a gentle lady, being discreet, um, proper speech and communication in, in your words and in your mannerisms, you know, not giving stink face and resting bee face and things like that. You know, our manners is very, very important. You know, there's a whole saying that manners make it man. Um, so making sure that we always operate in a manly way and not being disrespectful. You know, even if the person on the receiving end in our minds or, or in all right may have deserved it, Sometimes it's good to show them something else and just take it up, up, up and still smile. And I can remember getting, I get bad customer service nearly all the time uh, from different places. And I don't allow their attitudes to affect the way that I deal with them because they're still a human being. And I don't know what they're going through in their life that affects them at work. You know, not everybody is the same. You know, some people are able to separate their personal life from their work life and they're able to, you know, put on the game face and do what they have to do. But other people sometimes just struggle with some things, you know. So, you know, all those things we see about, you know, Pennywise workers and, and things like that, you know, sometimes, you know, that could be us. Point back player, that could be us. And so sometimes your little act of kindness could just break that thing. That, that you know that is inside of them sometimes you showing them love and showing them kindness and being polite to them will convict them even more like well, you know what you know i shouldn't talk to people like that you know so sometimes just you know go start this small stuff um the eighth thing which is another big thing is your money are you craving for wealth and um are you dishonest in the way that you get your wealth and things like that do you deceive people 
So you rob people things and my money is another thing that you know what had to deal with me with um what is your love of money and your materialistic things or well, this is a very important for me it had to do with my with my type and things like that um you know some people i know some people don't you know believe in tithing and stuff like that and i always say your your giving and your your giving to god is all dependent on the relationship you have with god so um i can't tell nobody how to tithe and how to give because i love god and i have a relationship with him i want to do it um so but sometimes i wasn't consistent with doing it and i did see the difference and the effects of it in my life in terms of when i gave consistently and i and i sold consistently I, I saw the, a major difference with how, you know, things happen with my personal finances. And, you know, again, being honest in the methods of receiving money and things like that, those are things that we have to check. Um, number nine, your mortality. Um, I, are you virtuous and pure and, and, and conduct proper relationships? What about your, your biblical sexual purity? Um, and your attitudes and actions. What about the thoughts that you have and, and the desires to do the things that you do without opportunity to act? Um, you know, how is your how is your morality? What is the moral that you live by? These are very important things. And sometimes our morality could be inherited and lived, you know, just like how our parents do things, we do things. And sometimes our parents didn't always do the right things when it comes to, you know, or morality and again all of these things um will be based upon your relationship with god and what you subscribe to as much as we want to say that all christians should follow the word of the bible everybody have a different interpretation of what the bible says and everybody does a different thing um but it's not my business to fight down nobody and push what i believe down nobody throws i could just share what i believe in and that's about it my convictions will be your conviction so i'm not here to try to convince you that the bible that i read uh, is the truth that i live by that should, i just tell you what works for me right and 10 number 10 motives why do you do the things that you do what is the motive yeah what is the motive behind the things that you do is it so that when you do things it points does it point people to Christ? Does it does it point people to want to be a better person in their own life and things like that? Why do you do the things that you do? Do you do things to be to serve or to be seen? Is it to fulfill your personal desire or to fulfill the desire that God has for you? Those are the things that are gonna separate either the success or failure of the things that you do because the Bible says that what is done for God will last. Only what is done for God will last. Only those things. So, again, let's run through it. Your manhood, your ministry, your message, your maturity, your marriage, your methods, your manners, your money, your morality, and your motives. These 10 areas are very important areas that you should give some sort of attention to in this season. Because when you do get back out there, you want to make a difference. You want to make impact. You don't want to be the same person that you went into quarantine and you come out, you have the same stinking thinking, you have the same nasty attitude, you have the same, you know, um, suspect ways of how you do things. It is important that you, you grow, develop, and change in this time. So that's just my little encouragement to you. I hope it was helpful. Again, this is from the Prophets, Pitfalls, and Principles book from Dr. Bill Hammond. Um, and I thank, again, my Apostle Brian Pedro for allowing me to use his notes to do this, this video. Again, stay safe and use your time wisely. Bye.